Welcome or welcome back to Watch Advisor on YouTube. It's Alexander speaking, your host, and on your screen you see on the left side the new Tudor Black Bay Ceramic, and on the right side it is the Omega Seamaster Diver 300 meters Black Black. In this video, we'll primarily talk about the new Tudor Black Bay Ceramic. But since you also see the Omega on your screens, there must be a reason why I am showing the watch to you. Uh, to make a long story short, uh, you can't compare the two watches. It's like comparing apples and oranges, but the two watches are sharing one common thing, and this is a Metas certification. Until now, or before the Tudor came to the market, it was only Omega offering a Metas certification. This is a very tough and very difficult to achieve testing procedure done by an independent institute, the Institute of Metrology in Switzerland. Omega was more or less having this um, Metas uh, testing and the wording master chronometer on the dial exclusively and now as you can see master chronometer is also on the dial of the Tudor. So Tudor now also offers the watch being master chronometer certified but this once again is really the only thing the two watches have in common. What you see on the left side is the Tudor that's a very, very, very good watch. And having the watch now being Metas certified, Master Chronometer certified, rises the quality to an incredible value and an incredible level and value if you consider what you have to pay for it. But it is not a luxury watch as the Omega is. The Omega is a very luxurious watch. It is something different. It's another dimension. It plays in another league. You compare the Omega to a Rolex, yes. But you don't compare the Omega to the Tudor or a Tudor to this Omega. There is one brand, one brand Tudor must be compared to. And I will talk about this later in the video. But I am showing you the two watches. I will work out some differences. And those who are following our channel know that we have been presenting you the Omega Seamaster Diver 300 meters black black already in a separate video together with Greg Kisling the, uh, from Omega, the head of product management, and he described uh, us the entire watch in detail, every detail. I will point out something, some details of course, but now let us first focus on the new Tudor um, Black Bay Ceramic. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. The new Tudor Black Bay Ceramic features a ceramic case, Nomen is Omen of course, 41 millimeters is the diameter. Uh, I have been measuring a thickness of 14.7 millimeters. The watch is slightly thicker than the Omega and the Omega measures 14.47 millimeters. The lug to lug distance, so the distance from one lug end to the other lug end is 50 millimeter. And the total weight for those uh, being curious uh, about that is, as you see the watch here, including the rubber strap and the folding clasp in stainless steel, PVD coated stainless steel is 106 grams. Yep, um, the watch is waterproof 200 meters, 660 feet, yes. And it features a see-through case button. It is not ceramic. It is a stainless steel 316L stainless steel PVD coated with a see-through case as you can see. And it is the MT56021 U. I repeat that. <laughs> That's quite a complicated. 
um, caliber name, MT, that stands for Manufacture Tudor, and it's 5602, then slash or dash one U, one uniform. So, um, 70 hours of power reserve, automatic winding, and yes, now the watch and the movement, the entire watch are meta certified. I will talk more about meta certification just in a while. We have the a prominent crown with the Tudor rose on it. It is a 316L stainless steel black PVD coated crown. And uh, in uh, the inlay, the inlay in the basil is ceramic. You have a ceramic inlay in there. And the basil has 60 clicks, so you turn it in 60 steps. I will uh, make it turn and you may listen to the sound. One moment. That's the sound of the basil, um, yeah, you have that typical snowflake hands, um, largely and uh, yeah, uh, heavily coated uh, with a super lumi nova. You have a domed dial, a matte black dome dial sunray finish. It's not a ceramic dial. The Omega features a ceramic dial and is completely made out of ceramics, including the crown, the helium escape valve, the case bottom, everything is made out of ceramic. I will show you this just in a while. So, um, how do you open and close uh, or wear the watch? That's the folding clasp with a security, uh, with my gloves. Yeah, here you have that security. You can see here, you open up, it unfolds, there is a pin here, I can show the pin to you. Here is that pin, you can see it. You slide in the rubber strap and then uh, depending on, oh, I have to get into the camera, excuse me. You slide in and depending on the desired size, you nail the pin through one, or you push the pin through one of the holes and then you have the folding clasp being ready, operational, you close it and then you slide through and that's how it is. There you go, closed and you have two loops, taking the end and holding it. The Tudor fanboys, once this Tudor Black Bay Ceramic was presented, more than ever cried out, ha, ah, compare it to Omega, it's an Omega, you compare it to Omega, Tudor is comparable to Omega. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry, guys. I have to disagree. Really disagree. Um, they can cry out what they want, but facts, the facts are different. This is, once again, an excellent, gorgeous, incredible, good watch. No doubt. The watch, um, what you get for the money is, you can't compete it. There's one brand, probably in the future, if it is released out of its, literally out of its prison, it's Longin, the Swiss brand Longin, is imprisoned in the Swatch Group, because Hayek Senior, when he rebuilt the group after the Quartz Crisis, took the decision that Longin should be positioned in between 1,000 and 3,000 retail price. So now Longin must be kissed alive again, must be woke up again, must come out of its barriers and must even if it is touching the Omega segment in the down in the in the lower price segment, must be the brand competing against Tudor because this is the competitor. The competitor of Tudor is not Omega. I definitely say no. 
You can disagree, you can shout out as much as you want, but it is wrong. Why? Because this is an incredible good watch. It's a Volkswagen. If you want to go into the reign of the Volkswagen group, it's a Volkswagen. Sharing the common Mo engine, Meta certified, but Omega stays the Audi. This watch does not compare to an Omega. That's the facts. It does not compare to a Rolex. Why? Because it is not a Rolex. Omega compares to a Rolex and Rolex compares to an Omega. Tudor compares or should or will compare more and more to Longines. And if the Swatch Group is smart now and if they really do take the right decisions and if they wake up finally and if they release, if they release Longines out of, their artificial, of its artificial prison and they release the brand to really be strong again, this is the competitor of Tudor. It is Longin who has to come with an answer with a master chronometer certified watch and compete against in quality, price, design with Tudor. And if they do so, if this will ever happen, if Longin and Tudor get in a friendly competition, a competition that will bring out lots of incredible watches, the only ones taking advantage are you. You listening, watching that video, you buying a watch because the quality and the prices you will have to pay for these watches will be so incredible that you can forget everything else. Just forget the other brands because it will be Tudor. It will be Longines showing you and raising the bar year by year, month by month and showing what is possible and showing that you can get a incredible good Swiss made watch being certified by Metas for reasonable prices with good designs. And it's the two, the two brands, Longin and Tudor, who have to take this competition. And I so much wish, Mr. Hayek, Nick, if you are listening, wake up Longin. Matthias Brescian, the CEO of, of uh, Longin, if you're listening, Matthias, wake up your brand and go into that competition with Tudor. Show the world how good the brand is. It would, it would deserve, Longin would deserve it. And Tudor would deserve a good competitor out there. And you, you again, I, I have to repeat that you again listening out there, you would take advantage of incredible, amazing quality. Then you can forget all the brands left and right, up, no, up, down, not up and down, left and right. You forget them, simply forget them. You just forget them because you will never ever get the quality these two brands are able to deliver. Why? Because they belong to the two most or the two strongest groups, the two groups that have the most industrial power, Rolex Group and the Swatch Group. And they are able to do this. And no other brand will be able to deliver such incredible quality and such incredible prices. I will now quickly show you the Omega Seamaster 300 Black Black again. Take a look, watch our video. It is an insert. Here is the insert. This is the link to the video we taped in April at the headquarter of Omega together with Craig Kissling. We described the entire watch, all the technology, all its specifications, everything. So if you are really, you want to go into details, please watch that video. I will quickly Still, because you are here, you're watching this video, the video that is taped today, um, I will quickly run you a little bit through this Omega Seamaster 300 Black Black. The diameter is 43.5 millimeters. The uh, thickness of the watch, I mentioned it before, is 14.47 and the log to log distance, so the distance from one lug end, I have to hold the watch and show you lug to lug is always measured from one end to the other end of the lugs is 51 millimeter. And the watch you see here in your picture, it's a complete ceramic watch, a complete ceramic watch, including the, including the pin buckle and completely ceramic rubber strap, 
ceramic case, ceramic basil, ceramic push, uh, ceramic crown, ceramic helium escape valve, ceramic case button. The weight here is 115 gram as you see the watch here. So what you have here is an Omega uh, with a ceramic dial that has been laser ablated uh, and you can see the typical waves of the Seamaster. The insert in the basil is also ceramic and it also has been laser ablated with a positive relief as you can see. The basil has uh, turns in 120 clicks. Um, here is the sound of this basil. The Seamaster is waterproof 300 meters or 1,000 feet. Um, this is the watch once again from the side. I said it before, the crown is a ceramic crown. We do have a ceramic case bottom with the so-called Nayad lock, a Nayad lock case bottom. What is a Nayad lock? It's written here, Nayad lock. The Nayad lock guarantees and makes it uh, guarantees that it will be everything that is written and engraved is will always be correctly aligned. So once you close, I'm holding it into the camera and you can clearly see here dive of 300 meters, 300 meters, 1000 feet. And you see here the, the naming Nayad lock and the Nayad lock always when it is closed, guarantees that everything that is written or engraved here by laser will always be perfectly aligned, so there is no possibility of misalignment. You also have the typical helium escape valve as the um, Seamaster features. Some don't like it. Um, I have to say it is part of the DNA of this watch as for instance uh, the Cyclops magnifying glasses uh, on uh, the Sapphire Crystal on the Rolex watches so it's part of its DNA and it has to be there. You like it or don't you like it but it is part of the DNA of this Seamaster 300. I said it already you have a um, ceramic, completely a ceramic dial and I will also give you the loom shot and you will see that there is enough to see even when it is dark. You have a different uh, coloring, you will, you will see this on the loom shot, different coloring of uh, dots, hour hand and minute hand and you clearly see that there is enough emission at night, light emission, to be able to read the time. Voila! So, a uh, rubber strap, perfectly integrated. I said it before, the pin buckle also in ceramic. And there is one extremely nice little detail I want to point out. End of, uh, end of the, the strap, you see a triangle. You see that triangle here in your picture? And that's not a design element um, or something uh, yeah, they didn't cut out correctly. Uh, instead of putting a rectangular end, they cut out the triangle. No. This is something very nice, a little detail. If I take this loop and I will try to bring it uh, into the camera, um, you see here, if I take this loop, there is that little nipple. Yep. Um, and this little extra, once you close, I will do this, so you slide in there, you choose your appropriate length, uh, with gloves in front of the camera, it looks easier than it is, okay, there we go, I'm in there, and now comes the little miracle, you now have that end, you slide it through the loop, 
the first loop where there is written omega. It's not easy with gloves, I can tell you. And then, then, look, you press here and that little nipple will fix where the triangle was and this stabilizes the second loop on the brace, on the strap, sorry, on the strap and this will always look good and never ever slide out and then, uh, yeah, be loose here. It is fixed. And this is a very nice little details, as many other details um, that uh, if uh, I didn't mention them, please discover them in the video with Greg Kissling. We taped in, uh, in April, I have to mention that. Once again, Omega uses the uh, Caliber 8806, um, is also certified by METAS has a power reserve of 55 hours. Oscillating frequency is 25,200 semi-oscillations, three and a half hertz. The Tudor movement is a four hertz, 28,800. But, 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 this, there is a huge difference. This is a coaxial escapement. A coaxial escapement and the Tudor features a Swiss lever escapement. So there is a difference. Um, in between a Swiss lever escapement and a coaxial escapement. Um, Omega has been introducing the coaxial escapements in 1999 and since then has transformed all its movements, all of them into uh, coaxial escapement. The coaxial escapement functions with uh, a system of free pallets, that's the difference, with a system of free pallets that separate the locking function from the impulse, avoiding, and now comes the thing, avoiding the sliding friction of the lever escapement. So a coaxial escapement is much more stable, has almost no friction, needs no or only a few lubrication in comparison to the classical Swiss lever escapement. And also Rolex has already been changing its escapement to its Kroner G escapement. There might be a good reason why they have been doing it and it might be that uh, the Swiss lever escapement, yep, it is the Swiss lever escapement, but might have some disadvantages and the main disadvantage is, yes, friction. Not happening with a coaxial escapement. Omega has introduced this in 1999 and since then is equipping all its watches with it. And the entire watch is, as the Tudor, completely master chronometer certified. Means all the movement, etc. The entire watch is master chronometer certified. And I will run you quickly through what is a master chronometer watch just right now. The Master Chronometer Certification is delivered by METAS, Switzerland's official government authority on all issues related to measurement and measuring equipment and procedures. As a completely independent institute, METAS stands at the cutting edge of measurement accuracy in Switzerland and is able to determine the exact unbiased criteria for what precision really means. It was in January 2013 when Omega launched its very first anti-magnetic wristwatch. Anti-magnetic up to 15,000 Gauss and it was two years later in 2015 when Omega officially launched the METAS certification together with METAS, the Swiss Institute of Metrology and since then Omega has been are uh, changing all of its movements, all of them, including the Speedmaster, that was the last one. There is a nice video explaining the differences. If you haven't seen the video, please go and check it out, uh, including the famous Speedmaster chronograph, hand-wound chronograph movement, the 3861 into Metas, certifi Metas certified 
into a meta certified watch. I always have to say watch. But what was the reason why did Omega do that in the very early days? It was because they quickly recognized that magnetism is the new and only real enemy of mechanical wristwatches. Water is it anymore? Dust is it anymore? Shocks are is it anymore? Temperature is it anymore? It is magnetisms. Magnets are around us everywhere and it's a part of our daily life. They are in our mobile phones, in covers of our iPads or uh, tablets. They are on metal clasps, on handbags, invisible clasps that close down. These little magnets go up to two and a half thousand, four thousand, five thousand gauss, incredible strong magnets. A hair dryer, for instance, generates 400 gauss. Um, the new smart um, charging back of the iPhone generates up to 800 gauss. A laptop can generate up to 1200 gauss. An iPad cover, as I mentioned before, 1400, even more gauss. And these magnets are dominant. They are everywhere and they're getting more and more because more and more magnetical or mag applications with magnetism do apply in our daily life. So it was a good and wise decision to really eliminate everything of a watch that could be magnetized and replace it with materials that can't be magnetized. And this is exactly what they did. And then they, it's, they, there was a certification needed and it was METAS providing these tests and the test procedures and it, it needed to be proven that this, what they claimed, that a watch can resist 15,000 Gauss and the tests I'm going to name you now are really tested officially by a government authority and not by themselves. And now Tudor comes or came with its first METAS certified watch. So they have been as well doing lots of investment, money and technology investment to really uh, transform that movement into a movement, eliminating all parts that can be magnetized by parts that can't be magnetized, including, of course, the hairspring. That's logical. It's a silicon hairspring in both of the movements. And both companies have been working a lot with lots of brain, lots of technology. And this is what I said before. It's only the Rolex group and it's only the Swatch group that can do this. I don't think that anyone else in the near future, only Longines, Anyone else will follow this step presenting a METAS certified watch. If you are interested to learn exactly what the METAS test is, please download this document you see in, uh, now in front of me or on your screen. These 19 pages describe in every little detail what the test is about. Uh, the link to download this document um, is mentioned in the, in the description of the video. So download it. It's in English language if you're really interested. I will not run you through these 19 pages. That will be rather boring, I think. It's uh, for those who are, want to go a little bit deeper. Um, I will give you in brief an explanation what this test, the METAS test or the Master Chronometer Certification is about. You, of course, all know what a COSC test is. That's when movements are sent to COSC, the uh, official um, certification of chronometers in Switzerland. And this is just the beginning. If you want to get a meta certification, the first thing that's necessary is that the watch is Swiss made. The second thing is that the movement alone, not the watch, the movement alone needs to pass the Swiss official chronometer testing institute COSC and needs to fulfill the requirements of minus four plus six seconds. When it comes back, then METAS, only then METAS starts with the tests. And the first thing they do is they take the movement alone and expose it to a magnetic field of 15,000 Gauss and observe if the watch movement stops or not, if it's still functioning. Once this is the case, the watch is still, or not the watch, the movement is still functioning. The second test is that the 
completely assembled watch, the completely assembled watch, not only the movement dog, a completely assembled watch, the watch head without bracelet or strap, of course, then is being tested and being um, uh, tested with 15,000 Gauss and it has been checked if all the functions are still uh, working correctly of the watch, if the watch is still correctly working, the completely assembled watch. Next test that is done is the watch is exposed to 15,000 Gauss and chronometric precision is calculated after 24 hours. The next day the watch is demagnetized and the chronometric precision is calculated after 24 hours again. And there shouldn't be minimal, there shouldn't be large, I wanted to say, there shouldn't be large deviations. Only minimal deviations between the two days are allowed. The next thing what's happened is, and this test is carried out over four days. During these days, the watch is placed in six different positions and two alternating temperatures, 23 degrees and 33 degrees, and is also exposed to 15,000 Gauss. Chronometric position is recorded each day. Then the watch is demagnetized and again checked. And again, the results uh, need to be, there need to be minimal deviations between the two days. The power reserve is checked. If the watch claims to have a certain power reserve, it is checked. It's not said that if uh, a manufacturer says my watch runs 70 hours or 50, 55 hours in our case, that this, is the, that this must be the case. It is checked. What happens then, and this is really something I like very much. Um, the chronometric precision between 100 and 33% of power reserve is tested. Normally a watch is almost fully wound and uh, watches, when they are fully wound, of course they do perform. But in this case, uh, in this test, the watch is placed in six different positions and its chronometric precision is recorded at 100% of power reserve. The and the process is then repeated when the power reserve is reaching something like 33%. And then the average results of the six measures during both states of the power reserve and give the deviation between the two days. And also here, the deviations must be minimal, minimalistic or, or minimal. They're, it's not allowed that these deviations are huge. It's always zero plus five seconds. Zero plus five seconds. These are the requirements of meters. And there's one last test they do. Water resistance is checked, but not with a vacuum testing equipment. No, all the watches are exposed into water and according to METAS tested. If they are divers and if they claim to be 300 meter waterproof, it's at 25% are added on top. So the watches need to perform and need to show in water that they are really waterproof. So once again, if you're really interested in all the details, please download this document from the official site of the Institute of Metrology, the Federal Institute of Metrology, uh, 19 pages, all technical exp exp explanations are given there, requirements are given there, so if you want to read through them, please do it. But even if I have been giving you just a, a short summary, uh, you can imagine that this METAS testing the certification that a watch is allowed to name itself a master chronometer is very tough. Imagine a normal watch company manufacturing a watch and they claim that they are delivering a precise watch. Do they really prove it? Huh, this is the big question. Do they really prove it? Yeah. Um, if a watch goes through that torture, you can be sure that's the best of the best of the best you can buy. Tudor did it. Congratulations, that's really an effort that is worth doing it. Omega was the first, Omega was really the very first to start to think ahead. And then the big question is, and maybe some of you have already thought about, what is Rolex doing? What kind of testing are they doing? On their dial it is written superlative chronometer. And this is for decades already there. Um, so Rolex could never ever 
take this superlative chronometer away from the dial and replace it, replace it with master chronometer. We don't know exactly what Rolex is doing. They are for sure. And I have no proof for, that, for what I'm saying now, but I expect them that they do in the background test the, watch at, the watches at least at the same level as they do as Meta does officially. If Rolex puts superlative chronometer on a watch, you can be sure you buy the best of the best. As you do if you buy an Omega, it's the best of the best in the luxury segment comparable and only comparable to Rolex. And now Tudor has that, um, has that new um, quality, quality label printed on the dial master chronometer and it's now the answer must come, as I said at the beginning of the video, must, must come from Longines. It's Longines that has to wake up. Longines has to get out of its prison, that virtual prison, prison where it is said that the brand should be positioned in between 1,000 and 3,000 euros. Longines must give the answer. Longines must get into competition with Tudor. And if the two brands start this competition, believe me guys, it's game over, game over. I say it with lots of, yeah, with, with confidence. It's game over for lots of companies because if they offer that quality for that price, you cannot, you cannot, you should not, you cannot any longer buy another watch because you don't get that quality. You can buy marketing, you can buy blah, blah, you can buy stories, but you won't get the quality they will probably offer. Tudor does it. Very nice. Congratulations one again, once again. And for what you pay, you really get an incredible good watch. But, and I have to say this once again, Tudor fanboys, sorry again. You can't compare it with an Omega because Omega is really playing in another league. Omega is luxury segment. The complete watch is done differently. That's a complete different approach. Everything is really pushed to the limits. And of course, Tudor needs, needs to, can't do this, needs to stay in its um, price range. They can't offer what an Omega offers because then the watch would cost the same. You get a good watch, you get a perfect watch, you get an, a high quality watch that really gives you value for money, but it is not on the level of an Omega. And uh, Tudor does not compare to a Rolex. It's an Omega that compares to a Rolex and it's a Rolex that compares to an Omega and it will be, last time I'm saying it, hopefully, hopefully this watch group, please, Matthias Breschan, Mr. Hayek, Nick, please, wake Tudor up, uh, wake Longin up, Longin up and yeah, start that competition and yeah, then you will be, yeah, you will have fun because you can divide this market in two brands and all the others participating in the market. Yeah, they are there, but do we still take them seriously? I don't think so. Okay, uh, now, thank you once again for watching the video. Um, interesting discussion. I hope you are posting your comments. Um, do me one favor. If you are a Tudor fanboy, please don't write anything cruel like Tudor compares to Omega. It is simply not true, except the fact that as a Tudor fanboy, you get a really good watch, but it is, of course, not at the level of an Omega because your Tudor is not at the level of a Rolex. If you want to compare Omega, please compare it to Rolex. If you want to compare Rolex, please compare it to Omega. And if you want to compare Tudor, last time I said, compare it to Longines. Thanks for watching. All the best. Uh, take care. And yup, open uh, discussion is open. Comments are welcome. Questions are welcome. And yup. In the, yeah, stay tuned on Watch Advisor on YouTube because there is, as always, much more to come.